please welcome Karsten Knoll, cryptographer, security researcher, and chief scientist at SR Labs. Thank you very much. Um, honored to be here at this fantastic event. I'm Karsten. I'm a hacker but also responsible for security at some very large organizations, one of which I want to talk about today. Let me start with a question for you guys, though. Which of these two persons will fully digitize their lives faster? We'll come back to the answer a little bit later, um, and it will involve legacy. Right? which is what I want to talk about today. Legacy, specifically legacy and how it makes um, our security life a lot harder. Um, and I want to talk about a Greenfield startup, as Greenfield as it gets, um, the company where I've been helping uh, run the security team for the last three years in India, where this gentleman lives. Um, this company is quite literally a Greenfield company, because where we work today is where Greenfields were just a couple years ago. Um, it's a very ambitious startup, the largest startup ever attempted, 25 billion invested so far. It wants to bring a new life, an internet life, to the Indian population. And in fact, their name is Geo, which is Hindi for life. Um, it is a mobile network, but also a digital services provider, uh, having cloned Netflix and Dropbox and WhatsApp, even PayPal, an entire bank, you name it, the entire internet life in an Indian flavor. Um, when I started there, I was, um, I was impressed by Indian scale, of course, but um, they keep surprising me over and over again. Last year we said, let's bring a few people in to test our network. Uh, we hadn't been live at that point, so we started giving out SIM cards to our employees and their friends. Uh, soon after, we had over a million people testing our network. Um, that gave us the confidence to actually do go live, and then uh, less than six months after that, we had 100 million people with our SIM cards in their phone. So massive scale, but fortunately for the security guy, complete greenfield. There's no legacy technology if you only build a 4G network. 4G replaced everything in telco. These components that didn't exist before 4G, even the protocols that they speak to one another, um, didn't exist before. So um, clean slate, uh, nothing to worry about, I thought, when I started there. But then you zoom in and you, um, you find all of these security um, measures in the 4G protocols to be optional. And of course, vendors are lazy and they do not in, um, implement anything optional. So you end up with the, modest, uh, more, uh, the most modern network that has no encryption at all. Huge step back. Um, and if you look at these boxes, as I said, they didn't exist a few years ago. Even the names didn't exist. But the vendors lazily just copy-pasted some existing technology. And when they were born, these boxes, they already had 10 years of, of legacy built in. And then speaking of managing these boxes, right, um, telco admins, they have been doing the same job for many years, and they preferred protocol from the 80s and 90s. Um, and the boxes do not support things like central authentication. So you have to go to each of the devices individual to create accounts, change password. So people leave them uh, at default. Um, we were fortunate enough to have several years to work through these kinks. Um, but I was shocked to face such a mountain of legacy where really I wanted to focus on new stuff, on next gen security. Um, or whatever you call it in fancy startups. Um, and if you're from a different industry, you, you may think that this is specific to telco, uh, but we're facing the exact same issues uh, everywhere else, on the enterprise side, for instance. We wanted to get rid of uh, the most dangerous legacy from my perspective, passwords. Right? In India, fingerprints are very common now, um, so we wanted to replace um, our Enterprise uses passwords, we have 60,000 employees, but also half a million partners who need to use our system, wanted to replace their Active Directory passwords um, with fingerprints. Uh, not possible. Huge effort went into this. It just isn't possible. You're tied to this legacy. Right? Um, now, Windows being a very old operating system, you may think that new operating systems are better in this legacy regard, um, but we face similar challenges with Android because we, we reached an almost saturation of, of 4G phones in India now. Um, every Indian 4G phone has one of our SIM cards in them already. We need to produce phones now to, to keep growing. And we couldn't find 
a single OEM uh, phone vendor who would give us a fully patched Android phone. They always say that they install patches, but many of those patches are forgotten, right? So even a relatively new platform like Android is already an accumulation of many years of security legacy mistakes, right? And of course, then there's the biggest legacy of all, if I may call it that, um, the employees, right? Um, most of which, or a majority of which, will give out passwords when asked over email or over the phone. And for most of them, you don't even have to ask for the passwords because they're so weak, you can easily guess them, right? Company name, at whatever, right? Um, now, we were able to drive down these numbers significantly, um, but using none of the common wisdom, uh, none of the awareness trainings and, and whatnot. And um, as a CISO, with all of these legacy issues, I feel left alone by the vendors, right? I wish that for every 100 startups doing something advanced on endpoint malware, there'd be one startup that helps me patch my operating system in a more innovative way, that there would be one startup that brings the same level of energy into privileged identity management, and there would be one startup that, that brings the same level of creativity to solving a problem like social engineering, which we've been facing for a long, long time. So I think legacy ties us down tremendously, and the same is true um, for the lady on the left here, um, coming back to our original question. So she is far ahead in the digital game, right, with her laptop and smartphone and, and whatnot, but she is using legacy technologies every day, ancient things like passwords and credit cards. The gentleman on the right, he has none of that, but he has one, one step ahead here that she may never gain, and that is a digital authenticator literally built into his fingertips. Right? The government of India registered everybody into a government database with their fingerprints, and he can now walk into one of our stores, puts down one of his ten fingers, and he'll walk out five minutes later with a free SIM card, unlimited data volume, already registered to a Netflix-style account. He has a Dropbox. For $20, he'll walk out with a phone that's already configured as a payment token. Again, as a key to his finger or to the phone itself with NFC. So five minutes and $20 later, this gentleman is ahead in the, in the digital game. Right? And he may always stay ahead because he never started from a position of legacy burden. And I think the, tr the same is true for our industry, right? where if we do not start cutting legacy issues, um, everything else is lost too. We are focusing way too much on solving new problems rather than in the old ones we couldn't solve in the last cycle. Right? And after all, every time we introduce a new security control into an organization, we create friction. Right? Security is not beloved, it's accepted by some, right? But if we don't focus on, on legacy issues first and only uh, solve the fancy stuff, we're not improving the weakest links of the chains. And we, we may just as well not do it. And in fact, considering all the friction and the externality, we should not do it. Thank you very much. Yeah.